What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today we got another 23 inch touch edition going out. HP Elite 1 G3 with the rotating stand. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> All right, guys, you know the drill. If you're not following me on Instagram, socials, at Vic underscore VP, what are you waiting for? I made that link tree for you. Be sure to follow all the socials. You would have seen a quick glimpse at this. Um, I got a lot of talk about with the Touch Edition stuff. There's a reason why you don't really see too many videos on it. It's because, honestly, pricing of this has gone up. It's not for, like, because of me. Uh, it's getting very difficult to find, like, good priced all-in-one PCs. Uh, you know, if you go back, I actually just sent this, I posted this to Facebook and I kind of had some people go like, whoa, Vic, what is that? And I sent them the promo video of the Touch Edition. It was about two years ago that I made my first Touch Edition build. And two years ago, times have changed drastically, especially with the cost of hardware alone. Um, Again, I never say numbers, I never say pricing in my, my, my videos because somebody's gonna take that video and you know that's three years old and be like, hey Vic, you said it cost it. Like, that's why I don't do that. I'm very wary of not saying the numbers uh, you know, in my videos. Uh, and again, I, I, you know, now it's kind of like, you know, I go with the motto of like, um, what's the word? Yesterday's price isn't today's price or today's price isn't tomorrow's price. Things change. Uh, you know, it's mostly the cost of hardware. Me personally, I have a set amount that I get for, you know, configuring. But the other big thing that people don't really say is that you have to get the hardware. You, you need a computer. And, you know, computers, depending on what type of computer it is, they cost X amount. So now, if you do go back on my videos, it's been a while since I've done a Touch Edition video. I think, honestly, the last video I did on a Touch was the one that went to Dubai. Um, that one, though, was a little bit different. He actually bought a separate touchscreen monitor and he bought a mini PC. Whereas I personally like to use an all-in-one. The Touch Edition software and all that, the games and all that, it's not high demand. You don't need a graphics card and such. It's nice to have a graphics card. Uh, playing games like Pinball FX 2 and 3, you might see some minor stutter. I'll be brutally honest. You see it on all of them with integrated graphics cards. That's like the basic stock CPU graphics cards. But... Um, even with uh, uh, the Dubai build, he didn't really even have a dedicated graphics card in it, or did it. But anyway, again, Dubai's build had, it was kind of different. It was a whole different type of touch edition. Um, again, because he had a touchscreen monitor and he had a NUC. It was, it was a totally separate PC. Me personally, I do like to use the all in ones. They're very compact. They're very like easy. This, this is it. Like this is, this, this is it. This is the computer right here. Very compact, again, that's known as an all-in-one PC. Now, a couple of things in regards to the Touch Edition, because, again, I've had videos go out. Um, again, it's using SFTE is the front end. I've had some people kind of message me, and it's like, oh, you don't, you're not the creator of the software. You're not the creator of the front end. I was like, I never claimed to be the creator of the, of the front end. I made my own custom, like, layout. SFTE is readily available, but there is setting up to do, but the big thing is that this is my layout. I got my logos all over it. I got my custom kind of tabs here. This is my layout. That's what it is. Um, in all honestly, yes, you could find this on like arcade punks. I've said this in the videos in the past. You could find majority of the games. I'm going to say a good like 25% of the games you could find on arcade punks. That's more of like the retro ones, this trivia fun zone. This is where like the mega touch style of gaming uh, was, was basically what I meant. Um, basically, like, you know, you could start a game, uh, you really have to insert money, but there's an emulator for the coins, you could play the game, you could exit it, but it's not an actual mega touch. I do have people that say like, hey, do you have like photo hunt on this? I go, yeah, there's a version of it, but it's not the actual mega touch photo hunt. So in the beginning, the, couple, the first couple of categories, the four categories here, that is kind of like a European style Mega Touch. Again, I just know Mega Touch. I have two of them now. Um, you know, I have my personal preference of Mega Touches as far as game wise. This has it similarly. It's it's close. 
I'll be honest, there's a lot of trivia games. I don't play trivia, me personally. There's like 160 trivia games alone. There's a lot. I'm not a big trivia person, so that's a hard pass on me. But as far as like Fun Zone and the card games and the word games, that's pretty cool. There's mo Some of it is pop cap style, like Bejeweled and Boggle. Uh, you know, that's classic stuff. But in my kind of setup, the real focus is after the, the, the little four kind of fake Mega Touch games, you do have the slots, big fish games, pop cap games, PC games, pinball and blue stacks so that's like my main focus as far as now like hey Vic what are you updating what is what's like added what was recently added to the touch edition in all honesty I mean blue stacks is your phone it's a phone emulator it's a Google phone pixel emulator so any apps you could get new apps on that on my end even with my arcade builds I focus on the PC side the PC games I have my way of getting the games that is what I focus on and if you do go to Steam, you know, a lot of people know Steam, there is a way that you could kind of look up by like genre or category. And there is one category specifically called point and click. That is what the Touch Edition is. It is a point and click kind of setup. There's only a handful of games that are point and click, but PC games are current and, you know, they, they, they do come out. So as far as on my end, that's probably the only thing that gets updated is the Touch Edition. But now keep in mind, you know, point and click games, it's not like there's a hundred games that come out in a month. You probably get lucky with like one or two every like three months. Uh, you know, the most recent one that just came out was um, uh, Monkey Island. Return to Monkey Island, a classic DOS game that was basically just revamped and redone. And as you can see, I do have it. So now I'm actually going to move this PC because I do want to show off the stock. This came with the all-in-one PC. I do want to show off the stock vertical on this. Really, you use this for BlueStacks, which is the Google Pixel phone emulator. Basically, emulate your phone. Normally, you could launch this in BlueStacks, but right now, BlueStacks has this update. I'm not really frequent on BlueStacks, but BlueStacks used to have this thing where you could rotate four ways. Now, they don't have it. They used to have multi-touch. Now, they don't have it. So the emulator is a little bit iffy, but it still works in its favor. But right now, um, if I wanted to show off a vertical game with the stock mount that it has right now, I have to actually flip the Windows display. I'm going to do that just for video purposes. Uh, instead of getting like a big bulky keyboard and mouse, I now have this kind of very nice all-in-one kind of thing. You can right-click on the desktop, and we're just basically going to landscape flip and keep changes this is where now like oh shit everything now is upside down but luckily like you could touch so again i'm only doing this and you could launch blue stacks from the desktop which i normally would suggest you do launching it from the front end uh you know clicking out and stuff like that it, it gets a little hectic uh but right now so this is the newest blue stacks x or something like that it gives you like this advertising page but in the corner is really blue stacks this is what you really want to launch um, again, in this customer scenario, I could get him the aftermarket mount, but, uh, you know, it's up to him, uh, you know, mounts on Amazon are like 30 bucks before taxes. So right now, if I wanted to launch temple run, as you can see, I could do it. It still thinks I'm in regular mode, but if I press this rotate here, I'm good. If I press this here, I go full screen. If I did not flip the Windows display, this would really be upside down. Uh, how to alleviate that? We would have to get the aftermarket mount. Um, and it's kind of cool. It's kind of crazy. Like, for example, this, right, Temple Run. I grew up on Temple Run. We all know Temple Run. But now this Temple Run actually needs, like, your phone to tilt. So now, like, you can't do that with this. But, you know, you could do your basics, like, swipe, uh, swipes. But... As far as like tilting now, now this game is deemed useless. But I guess this is this specific Temple Run version. Uh, you will need a keyboard. Right now you have to press F11 to get out of full screen. So I got that. I could go back into this normal mode and then I could always exit out. So it's just like a phone. I could exit out of my app and then it brings me back to my home and all that. If I launch, let's say, a regular app. As you can see right now, like it's upside down because I wanted to play a vertical game. So there's a couple things you gotta do. You gotta minimize these. You gotta right click here. You gotta do display setting, uh, landscape, flipped back to regular landscape. And then you'll be A-OK -okay 
to game on like normal. Again, I know, I know, I know, I know, I understand. Oh, Vic, that defeats the purpose. I get what you're saying. To alleviate that though, we would have to get a different mount. And it's fine, you could do that. Really, we need our mount to go this way, but this specific computer, the mount goes this way. So, it's fine. But in all in all, it's awesome. The BlueStacks emulator, again, it acts like your phone. In past videos, I did kind of make a video on how to make, uh, how to install APK files. Um, you know, you might get your good chance of a game being jailbroken, hacked, free. Um, but in all honesty, majority of them, you always have to pay for something. As you can see right now, I'm launching a free game. Uh, this game is old, tapped out. Uh, it was basically like, uh, I don't know, Farm Farmville? Was that the classic game where you build your farm? But it was basically like Simpsons characters. And it's cool. I like it. I dig it. It's basically a big iPad. The only thing right now for this specific customer, I'm going to let him know. He'll let me know back um, if he wants to spend money on the extra mount. Again, this is like a great, like, it's very rare to find an all-in-one PC with the mount already made. Like, it, it's awesome. And again, 1080p. The screen on this specific unit, it's, this is cool, like, and it's awesome. Like, you could play this normally, like, how you would. Again, this is a normal sideways thing. Big thing is if you want to go vertical. I did try to download Mario Run, but it's not in the Google Play Store for this BlueStack. So, again, as far as, like, BlueStacks, this is the emulator now. I, I have no power on the emulator, so stuff that used to work before, now it doesn't. But all in all, it, it works. It's, it's fun. It's, it's cool. Now, one big thing when it comes to this, for example, okay, big thing that people don't really understand, and now I know to say it in the videos, is something like this, it acts like your phone, so you do actually need Google Play Store. What does that mean? You actually need a Google account. Um, so I used to do it for customers, I used to make the fake accounts for them, but um, I guess my IP address got hit with, hey, you're making a lot of accounts. So now, customers will just have to make the account on their own and then send me the passwords and all that. Essentially, you could log into this with your real personal account and you could play your real personal games on this, which is cool. If you're playing like, I don't know, Words with Friends or if you're like that into it, you could do that. But me personally, I don't want to know your passwords. I don't want to know anything like that. I would personally rather you just make a fake one. I want to I want to have that this way I can make sure that everything's connected and it works and if I wanted to download like Instagram I can make sure it all works as you can see right now It's just like your app your phone. It is downloading right now Instagram. It's gonna go into your home page BlueStacks also sends a icon to your desktop, which is kind of annoying, but you can always delete them It's not that big of a deal, but as you see right now, I'm installing Instagram Apply and restart. I guess I have to restart the app it said and all that and eventually it will come back again That is just a blue stacks thing uh, as you can see I'm doing it live I won't really cut this just so you can kind of see it blue stacks is launching we have Instagram now here so I could click it And we just there you go it launched awesome again the rotate it's going this way This mount though it goes the other way so again that's like the only thing is like you know the screen rotate again This is the stock stand I'll let the customer know. And what's cool with that is that you could always get that second hand. You know, I could send this to him and then he could always maybe find it on sale or whatever, but it's cool. Again, it acts just like your phone. You could tab out. I still have Simpsons opened up, so I could always go back into the Simpsons and such. Again, we restarted the app, but essentially we just go back to where it was before. Uh, all in all, it's, it's cool. It's awesome. I wanted to take this touch edition and bring it another step further. And I was looking into like jukebox and in all honesty, we have apps now like Spotify and Pandora um, You know, you might as well use that nobody really downloads like personal, you know music files That's me personally. I don't you could do it. I didn't really find a good way to do jukebox I think there's like people that say you could do like YouTube jukebox. I don't know But where am I getting at you could most likely download like Spotify like a regular app would or Pandora and you could always launch your personal collection there. I even went a step further and I actually tried to download it in the in the actual like Microsoft store. I never did that, like I never used it, so I don't really know how it works, but Pandora. You know, you could make uh, an icon, you could search for it. This is right now outside of um, the front end, but I'm pretty sure it works as is. 
As far as volume control on this specific PC, there's no buttons. So I do have like a very simple like volume up and down on the actual keyboard. So I just wanted to mention that real quick as far as the tilting screen for the customer if he wants, you know, to get the, the other third party one, that's fine. I can make that happen. It's on Amazon, not a big deal. I'm gonna actually power off this system. I'm gonna bring it over there and I'm gonna power it on. And we're gonna talk about this specific PC in general. All right, so right now I'm gonna do this in one solid motion. So as you can see, my house has like this under stair thing. Um, and my wife was like, you know, even the contractor, my brother was like, what should we do? And I was like, make me a little window pocket. And everybody laughed at me. Uh, but as you can see, I use it for storage, like for Xbox controllers and all that. But this fits beautifully inside of this. So yes, granted, you know, I have the power cord here and I guess building codes or whatever, it's under the, whatever. But as you can see, it fits in this pocket. It's pretty cool. I got a 23 inch Elite One G3. This is a Gen 3. Uh, before we talk about computers, I'm gonna power this on. And no joke, watch how fast this turns on. Three, two, one, button pressed. And this is like just importance of specs. The, yeah, that were booted. We're, we're booted, I could launch my front. <laughs> it is mind-boggling to me, the speed on that. But again, this is where I tell customers, this is where I want to, I sit down. Every build is unique. I sit down and I try to find you the best spec stuff. And if I can't find the best spec, then obviously it will change the price. Meaning I could find lower spec stuff, obviously on eBay it is cheaper and then it's also going to be cheaper for you, but it might sacrifice in some areas. Speed is speed. I mean, that's like amazing to see like how quick it booted, but you know, when it comes to all-in-ones, it's not like we're going to be playing, uh, you know, Call of Duty Warzone in 4K. Like it's, it's not, I'm not talking about that. Some of the games, like I said, for pinball, you need at least a decent spec PC and such. So now this is pretty cool. I took a quick second, uh, downloaded a couple more stuff. Again, that's cool because you can do it on the fly. Again, I did the Microsoft Store. I just put on like iHeartRadio. Um, again, this is kind of substitute to Jukebox. I don't really know many people that have like the music files, but I can launch iHeartRadio. And I don't want to get hit with copyright, but essentially, I could play the music. Yes, there is a headphone jack, so if you need it louder, it is an option, but I right now, I'm inside of iHeartRadio. And I could play music like that, outside of the front end. So, stuff like that, Pandora, iHeartRadio, and Spotify, I have it like you just go to the search bar with Cortana and it'll load up. Unfortunately, you can't put it as a desktop icon. Uh, maybe you can, I have to look it up, but so far I couldn't figure out how to put it as a desktop. But you just search it. I could also um, pin it. Uh, I should actually do that. I could actually probably pin it um, to the desktop. I'll probably do that real quick for him and make life easy. But again, all in all, yeah, I could. I could pin it to the desktop. Cool. I just don't want like the desktop to be like cluttered with stuff, but Essentially, I could pin it to a desktop. Um, all in all, it's pretty cool. Me personally, like when I'm working in the garage, I tell a Lex, you know, play this radio station and she plays it. But it's pretty cool to see that you do have the option for that. All right, cool. So real quick, I basically just put the three main music stuff. I'll try to see if Odyssey uh, is on this, but basically now it's in the test bar. So you launch the test bar, you full screen it, and there you go. Now you have your music options and such. And again, you log into your personal accounts. If you're paying for Pandora, log in. The fake account that I made, you have the free access and all that. Anyway, let's talk about the specific computer that I got, okay? Big thing is that I always aim for all-in-ones. AIO is the term, and I my main go-to is eBay. I always get these refurbished. Getting these brand new current gen, that's beautiful. They are like, um, they, like the technology on them have gone way advanced, but it is a hefty price. I mean, all in ones, if I want to go to like Best Buy or Micro Center, they start at like 900 to like, I've seen them go up to like 1500 bucks. That's new. Now we go into the refurbished side of it. All the builds I've done in the past, minus the Dubai one, they've been refurbished eBay ones. 
And it's very difficult. I learned this with someone that I, I built a touch edition or I actually got an inquiry about it last month. It's very difficult to go on eBay and find a touch screen all in one. If you put those like keywords in and if you don't specifically look at the ad correctly, you will buy the wrong thing. Take it from me, I did it. Let's talk about this specific computer that I have in my hands that I luckily found. No joke, it seems to be a resale that you know fixes and gets these PCs and all that. This specific unit right now, we're looking at an HP Elite One 800 G3. This is the exact name of it. I've always done Elite Ones 800. In the past, it's been a G1, a G2. This is a G3. This is running an i7, 512 gig SSD, and 16 gigs of RAM. That, is, that to me is maxed. That is maxed spec out. i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gig SSD. So, in my honest opinion, that boot, I'm giving it to the SSD, I'm giving it to the processor, and I'm giving it to the RAM. All in one PCs are different than like gaming PCs. So this again, I came across it, amazing spec machine, and it was honestly a fair price. I'm not gonna mention the price that I paid for it, but it was fair for what it was compared to like the lower spec ones. It was basically equal in price on a lower spec machine. Not to mention that I discovered that the stand on it is beautiful and it does have the vertical spin. Granted, again, this stand might not work for the customer, he'll let me know, but yes, that is what this is standing at right now. And again, 23 inch, refurbished, seeing like this chrome, no dings, no scratches is amazing. You got one tiny one on the base, but like in the rear of the base, you don't even see it. Amazing, again, I, I, I can't believe it. The timing of this was just unreal. Now with that said, if you look back at like the G1s, the G2s I've done, all in ones, the ones I've done in the past, they actually had a touch thing here for the volume. This build doesn't have that. Is it a deal breaker? To me, it's not. Uh, you know, you do have headphone jacks here and microphone jack, but luckily with the keyboard I give you, it does have like the very simple volume button. You will need a keyboard and mouse. Instead of having like the big bulky one, you got this, you could probably even like tuck it away behind the stand and call it a day just like that. It's gone, poof, that's it. But I will always give you a keyboard and mouse. Ever since I did Project Canada, I've actually grown to like this little gamepad style keyboard and mouse. Now again, all the ones come in different shapes, different sizes, different specs. Like I said, some of them you'll find that have the volume up and down. This one, it's got a webcam on it. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I didn't test the webcam. I don't know, this, I'm not even looking at that. You could probably use it for Facebook, I don't know. But it's kind of cool to see like all the little features that this thing has. And the big thing was the stand. Like this stand, it's like, feels like it's on like, um, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. A gasket pressure thing. And it's just effortless, like, it's very simple, like to lift. Awesome. I'm gonna talk and play games and such as we go. With that being said, going back to like the eBay situation, again, I had a customer that wanted one of these. I actually bought what I thought was a touchscreen all-in-one Elite One PC, got it in the mail, it came home to me, and I discovered that it was not a touchscreen. So when you are looking at this stuff on eBay, be very cautious, message the seller. This specific unit it said in the ad touchscreen, and I still messaged the guy. I was like, is this a touchscreen? And the guy, rude, not rudely, but I get it, because I would say the same thing. The guy was like, it says in the ad touchscreen. I'm like, I'm just I'm making sure, because this customer is buying this, uh, he's, I'm hoping to get this out before Christmas, I gotta make sure that it works and it's good. Uh, so luckily the guy said, yes, it is a touchscreen, and boom, I pulled the trigger. You'd be surprised if you don't look carefully, majority, of the all-in-one PCs that you find, they are not touchscreen. This right now is a big fish game. It's kind of one of those find the item story mode type of game. I'll launch PC game and uh, I don't know, I'll do, I just downloaded this McPixel. Cool, let's do it. Uh, but yes, when you are looking at touchscreens, be sure it is a touchscreen. Again, go to eBay right now and look at the price of a touchscreen all-in-one. It will be over 
four to five hundred dollars. This one was over five hundred. Like I said, the exact number, but that's what it was. It was over that. Uh, I was like, I sat back to myself and I was like, shit. I used to sell them modded for like five hundred dollars. Now it just costs a PC alone that much. It's it's up there. It's it's crazy. So just gotta be careful with it and enjoy your touchscreen now. So again, be sure you are getting a touchscreen. Am I gonna get this bottle? Oh, I just picked it up. Great. Do I drop it? <laughs> again, this right now is a point and click game, so it gets a little difficult to find point and click games, but you find them. Now, a game like this, for example, as you can see, like, you might need the keyboard. Maybe if I press, like, escape, see, I could do that. You still need the keyboard, especially when it comes to the casino stuff. If you do launch a casino game, majority of the time, you will have to input your name. You need the keyboard for it. For example, like this one, and I did test every single game. I sat here and I launched each game. You might not have to put your name in it because I already launched it with my name in it. So, give or take, it depends. Now, if I go here, I'll launch them like Pinball. Pinball FX3, FX2, it's all there. And again, it works great with the touch. Somebody did mention to me, said, hey, Vic, if I rotate the screen, can I get like a V-pin view? No, you can't. Uh, it removes now the touch stuff. You, you, can't, you can't do it that way. So I was playing this saloon game before, ready to start. Again, left and right. It's basically like a very big touch window. I gotta drag my finger down and pull. And now we are gaming on and playing. Again, visually for me, because I have a V-pin, I could see when it's like a lot of stuff going on on the screen, I could see the micro. I'm talking like minimal micro. I have to now talk that way because I got customers that will get this and be like, hey, Vic, I see the stutter. It's not detrimental, but again, you do get people that will notice every little thing. If I do bump up the volume, It's great, it works, it's, it's awesome. You can change the views here. Again, the game is recognizing that you are playing on a touch screen and it kind of gave you the option for like the videos and all that. Again, FX2 and FX3 on this. So now you can exit out of pinball if you want. We can load up, I don't know, another PC game. Uh, again, it's kind of difficult to find like point and click games. You got a couple of board games, like you know, you got Clue, uh, Monopoly, um, the coolest one, I added it, but again, it's not totally touchscreen, is that they did make the new Oregon Trail. Yes, another classic DOS game. Uh, they revamped it. Granted though, this does need a keyboard. Um, it's not a totally touchscreen game. As you can see right now, I can't proceed without you know pressing like enter on the keyboard. I added it because it was a small game and it's classic, it's old school. Why not? Why not give it a try, you know what I mean? But yes, essentially you will still need the keyboard uh, just in case. Yep, as you can see, I do need the keyboard for this. I can't touch it at all. I should have tested it beforehand, but it was a tiny game. You know, it's a small game file and why not? You know, relive the classics, easy. I exit out, SFTE comes back, awesome, cool. I'm just cutting into the video right now because I ended it and I forgot to mention this because I know somebody's going to ask it. Somebody's going to be like, hey Vic, I want that one. I want that G3 one that you showed off. And that's kind of the difficulty now. I, I, I'd be amazed if I find another computer like this. It's going to be doable. I mean, again, look on eBay. I get this on eBay. Uh, it's just, it's not something that I can go to Best Buy tomorrow and get this exact one. That is what happens when I use these refurbished PCs. I do get a lot of people that go, hey, I want that one you showed off in that video. I want that. I'm like, mm, it'll be a little tough to, you know, find it. Hopefully I can find it. Uh, you know, I really, I really hope I could find it, but it's going to be difficult. Uh, again, that is just the, the thing that happens. You could also, like I said, you could look on eBay. You could look for your own computer. You could send me the actual computer. Again, this is running Windows 10 version 1909. I've said it in past videos. The front end needs flash, and for it to work correctly, it needs to be that version because after 1909, Windows removed flash. So there is stuff to do. As far as like external drives, uh, it is an option on my end. However, I don't, there's no tech support. I, I don't offer any help at all, and it is not a plug and play solution. Nothing 
is plug and play. And I always say it in my videos, nothing at all is plug and play. You could send me this and I could configure it correctly, but that is what I offer. That is what it is, okay? So just keep that in mind again with this specific unit that you see here, that's what you see. So one quick thing I do wanna show off for Bluestacks and as far as the importance of the PC specs, I'm gonna launch right now Call of Duty Mobile. Yes, this Bluestacks plays Call of Duty Mobile. Again, this is an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD on this. And Bluestacks, depending on the game, if it's a graphic intense game, um, it does need certain specs. A lot of times when I'm looking up like um, when I'm looking up all-in-ones, I've seen a lot of eight gig RAM and i5s. I've never experienced them, but I do know for a fact the lower RAM, it will struggle on some of the Bluestack apps. So, and also pinball. So just real quick, this is the tutorial, but just to kind of show you like what this looks like. I don't play this on my phone, uh, but just to kind of show you how this works. And it works pretty cool. Uh, you know, kill the enemy, cool, let's do it. I got the volume low right now. I'm basically, again, using my thumb here. Let's bump the volume real quick, why not? Reload. So I gotta tap to aim, it says. Awesome, I think it's gonna give me an option for like easy mode or advanced mode, I can move. Settings. Settings, so this is again the tutorial. Advanced mode settings, cool. Again, Call of Duty Mobile. Pretty cool. On blue stacks. Again, you do need the keyboard to bring it down. And just like your app on your phone, you exit it and you're back. Cool. So now with this kind of build, I actually just found this kind of website. Obviously you could use this as your regular PC. You wanna do Facebook stuff, uh, you know, basic kind of stuff. Uh, it's not that intense as like a gaming, you know, ultimate arcade setup. But basically I did find a website that has a bunch of point and click games, uh, you know, kind of like old school, like mini clip stuff. And uh, it's cool. Now you just added more games to the count. Uh, again, this is just your, your regular website uh, I just happened to, when I was looking up Steam point and click games in Google, this came up. Uh, and it's cool, obviously we'll get your ads, so if you click on something it will pop up in Firefox, but eventually it's gonna pop up. It's loading, some guy named Bubblebox, enter. Uh, it's cool, it just kind of shows you that like you're not just limited to like the front end, there is more stuff to it. Again, when it comes to like the blue stacks, I usually suggest you launch that outside of um, the front end. It's just kind of easier, it's cleaner to do and such. And as you can see right now, I'm playing like a website game. Like, oh, I just opened up this and this guy did something and like cool, like this This is cool. You know, some people might go apeshit for this, but as you can see, it, it advanced. It's very cool, it's awesome. When you're done playing, you just press the power button right here and you call it a day. There you guys have it. Another touch edition going out just in time for the holiday.